Screw bars, TGDMV. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to another Screw Boys TGDM video. Today is going to be a quick one, but I promise you it will be, well, deserving of your time. As you could tell, today is October 30th, a.k.a. the spoopy day. Yeah, Halloween, trick-or-treat. Speaking of which, I actually went trick-or-treat last night. Got a lot of Kit Kats. Surprisingly, no Sour Patch Kids. I'm a bit, a bit saddened by this, but... Eh. Eh, it is what it is. Also... Do be minding that I have come down with a cold recently. And if I do sniffle or have the occasional cough, that is the reason why. So, so like Christmas, Halloween has some of my favorite movies. But, which of these movies are my favorites? Well, as you can see right here... Top 10 Halloween movies of all time. But first, your friendly neighborhood disclaimer. Some of these movies I will mention are not made for children, and I don't recommend them. I don't recommend them unless... unless you have parental supervision or you just don't watch them at all. These movies contain sexual con. Some of these movies contain sexual content, swears, and, of course, the usual stuff you would see in a PG-13 or R-rated movie. Also, any of these movie picks may trigger some people. This kind of leads into my next point. These are my opinions. So, this entire list is my opinion, and my opinion only. So, if you want to talk about your favorite top ten Halloween movies, why don't you comment down below? It would mean a bunch. While you're down there, like and subscribe to the channel. It would mean a bunch to me. But without further ado, let's get into the top 10. Number 10, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, this series has had a very storied legacy. It started out in 1984 with the original Ghostbusters movie. A sequel in 1998, a 2016 reboot that nobody asked for. And then this. It's a great movie. It's a great revival and a, and a true continuation of the Ghostbusters series. The talent is great. And there are, some, there are some good scares, but scares that wouldn't really be contended for the, like, up there scares. There are some pretty likable characters. And, of course, the return of the legacy characters. That's a given at this point. And, of course, nostalgia done right. Yeah, I know nostalgia is like a big factor here, but but this is a nice movie and I think is really deserving of the number 10 spot. And at number 9, yeah, you can see where this list goes south real quick. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Great scares, enjoyable plot, mo mo the most insane visuals, and rememberable antagonist in the form of Freddy Krueger. He would go beyond he would go beyond the Nightmare on Elm Street series to become a pop culture icon and of course the series would become a uh, of course a, one of those series where the sequels seem endless. And of course with even cheesier one-liners which is which was a staple, but the first film is a great watch during Halloween. But yet again Watch at your own risk. Don't let children watch this movie. It's particularly very violent. So, this is a watch at your own risk movie. Coming in at the number eight spot, something a little more friendly. Coraline. Yes, I'm counting Coraline as a Halloween movie. I mean, like, it's taking place in a spooky setting, so why not? This is, in my opinion, Henry Selick's Swan Song. And, of course, has the most amazing stop-motion animation you'll ever see in your life. Some of the most amazing, I might, I might say. The plot is unnervingly creepy, even for a movie that's intended for children. And 
trust me, you, you, you'll see when you watch it. And of course, every character in this movie is, for the most part, well well written and executed to perfection. I really think that Coraline is one of the underrated movies where you should really give it a watch and then, well, you won't forget it. Coming in at the number eight, at uh, the number seven spot, we have Friday the 13th. And coincidentally this year, there was a Friday the, the 13th. Yet again, this is like A Nightmare on Elm Street, a movie that you shouldn't watch with your kids. And also is another one of those franchises where the movie just keeps going on and on and on. And of course, the original is one, is the one to boot here, of course, as for most of these. Kills and chaos galore, interesting main antagonist, Jason Voorhees, luxurious direction, and a, link, and a lengthy runtime with some some good survivors. And of course, of course, come on. It's Friday, it's Friday the 13th. I'd like the date, the movie. You know, this. Anyways, number six, everybody. Hocus Pocus. Funny story behind this. So, when I was a kid, I used to go to this uh, program called Beyond the Bell. And it's like a after-school little thing that me, my sister, and eventually my brother went to to uh, after school in elementary. One time, it was during Halloween that we decided to put on this movie. I cried all the way through the movie, which has got to be a feat for any human possible. It's got to be a, f like, a feat. But over time, I've sympathized. I've grown to love this movie and of course it's become a and of course even though with its initial reaction being a bit mixed it eventually became one of those movies where over time it got an enormous fan base and and everyone loved it of course you got a great trio of antagonists in the form of the Sanderson sisters played to perfection by Betty Mill Millard, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathleen Nay. I mean, I'm hope I'm saying those names correctly. It's got an, a fantastic soundtrack and some catchy tunes. It's got it's got a very crazy and questionable finale, but. No doubtably, it's a carefully crafted story um, about three witches who need the life force of children to survive. Clearly, this was a trying to piggyback off the success of piggyback off the 1990 movie Witches. If you know, you know. But halfway through, surprised, and a great transition into next month. Yep, got the little month is coming, don't you worry. Gojira, uh, yeah, Gojira, Gojira, Godzilla, whatever you want to call it. I made a whole review on this channel, and this film is absolutely amazing. It's a it's a masterpiece from start to finish, and definitely one of the greater movies. And in my opinion, is is basically kind of like a great movie to watch during the Halloween season. Unlike the rest of the Godzilla movies, probably with the exception of Godzilla vs. Destroya and GMK, and as well as Shin Godzilla. But, I mean, like, what is there to say that it hasn't already been said about this movie? It's got bomb It's got a big and bombastic special effects, an obsolete message, and an and an over the moon shoots for the stars. Basically, it's got a stellar cast. It's got a stellar cast, and well, <laughs> yeah. Go check out my review if uh, you want more than what I said here. Number four, Ghostbusters. 
You didn't think I would leave the original out, would I? I mean, like, what is there to say about this one? It's an iconic movie that 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 is one of the greats in cinema. Spooktacular story, charismatic cast of characters, with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and Ernie Hudson as the four titular boys that that become the that become well the talk of New York. Basically, it's a classic movie. And of course, who can ever forget the finale? I mean, like, Giant Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Amazing. Can't be topped. Coming in at number three, we have Scream. Ah, yes. We're not out of the woods with these yet. Scream basically was a defier of odds in the horror community. Basically, it was a spoof on horror. Somewhat. Basically, it was... uh, Basically, the characters knew that they were in a horror movie and, of course, distinguished all of the tropes of a traditional horror movie. Basically, it... It was way ahead of its time, kids. That's why you love the 90s. And really, it makes me miss it all the more. But, over-the-top meta story, over-the-top kills, I would say. Self-aware characters, like I said. And, of course, it's one of the rare horror movies where you could get a good chuckle. But, probably the most... uh, Um... One of the, well, one of the most standout elements of it was that it actually had a twist villain. And also, well, was the start of, well, um, Matthew Lillard's career into eventually him becoming Purple Guy. Yes, he is William Afton in the FNAF movie, but we're not going to talk about that one because that one's just like a mid-movie at best. But anyways, yet again, another one of those movies where it started off with a good one, then spiraled into mediocrity. And also another one of those movies where shouldn't watch it with the kids. Maybe just watch it on your own time if you're not a kid. Alrighty, I swear to God, this is the last um, violent horror movie. Number two. Halloween, John Carpenter's original horror movie. This is frankly where all them slasher clones came from. John Carpenter's original um, masterpiece. It's when he delight, and it's so, and it has some pretty delightful directing, if I do say so myself. And uh, well, Michael Myers, one of the greats in Hollywood villainy. And also, the most iconic, probably one of the most iconic soundtracks and character themes. Just some simple notes. And of course, a very, very spooky setting fitting for a spooky movie. Now, of course, you're all probably wondering what my number one is, but let's go through some honorable mentions, shall we? On a mansion 2023, these grim grinning ghosts will basically have give you more of a spook than the 2003 Haunted Mansion movie. It's a better movie than the 2003 movie, but it's honestly not that great, which is why it's in the honorable mentions. Werewolf by Night. The MCU dabbles in horror, and it's a chilling good time. Who knew that the MCU and the horror genre almost went together like peas in a pod? Sure, Sam Raimi tried to dabble in horror with Multiverse of Madness, but Werewolf by Night was truly the the one that well, married the two together. 1965's It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Okay, this is where I'm going to be, be and this is where I'm going to be stretching it a little bit. It's a classic. It's a just feel-good movie. And plus, it's the Peanuts. Who are you gonna, who's going to argue? Alien, and by extension, Alien 2, or Aliens. Both are great movies in their own right. 
Amazing practical effects by Stan Winston Studios. Amazing characters. But yet again, another one of those movies where you should watch it on your own time if you are not a child. Got Hellraiser. I mean, like, it's supernatural. Also, shout outs to The Exorcist. Saw. If you love the if you love a body count then and just don't care about story, this is the movie for you. And of course, Dead of Day of the Dead. The kind of characters. Probably one of the great greatest villain deaths I've ever seen. But yet again, watch at your own risk. Don't let your kids watch this. And the number one pick for my favorite movie to watch during the spoopy season is The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I know what you're going to say. Nicholas, isn't it a Christmas movie? To that I say nay. And I say tis both. It's basically a nice little treat. And I feel like is the best in-between you can get. And... Tim Burton and Henry Selick really knocked it out of the park with this one. Terrifically spooky soundtrack and songs that will have you singing along with the iconic characters and a smart story, as well as the as the ever so devious Oogie Boogie. You gotta love that guy. Sing the, his song like twice a day or like something like that, but it's also got some amazing stop motion animation, but where most people are torn at the fact is that it is either a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie. And then there's the group that just says, it's both. Shut up about it. I'd say it's both. The first half is Christmas, but it slowly transitions into th- well, the first half is Halloween. Then it slowly and beautifully transitions into the Christmas part. And of course, the whole, well, the main selling point of this movie, combining the two holidays together. And honestly, a little fact trivia for you. Tim Burton got the idea because he saw Halloween decorations staying up while while people were putting Christmas decorations up in a store window. And that immediately gave him the idea for the movie. Which is kind of weird. But these are my picks for the top 10 movies to watch during the spoopy season. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. That's a wrap. And uh, make sure you have a happy Halloween. Long live the Skrills. Don't forget to do the three things. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, well, thanks for watching. Long live the Skrills. I'll see you all next time. Happy Halloween!